In 2009, Orphan and its star, Isabel Furman, left a bloody mark on horror history. So where has the actress behind the pint-sized killer Esther been? As a fan of the original Hunger Games books by Suzanne Collins, Furman wanted to play, or rather, she wanted to be, the main character, Katniss Everdeen. She told MTV, I saw myself as Katniss, but I think everyone does when they read the book, because that's the character that you related to so much because you're seeing the whole story through her eyes. From page one, I was like, oh, I want to be Katniss so badly. She even wrote a letter to director Gary Ross about her wish and ultimately booked an audition, but was deemed too young for the role. As a consolation, she got the part of Clove, one of the career tributes who have spent their whole lives training for the Hunger Games. Furman wanted to play the hero, but was once more cast as a villain. Part of a pack of four, Clove stands out from her friends in two ways. The other three are all tall and blonde, far from the short, freckled, and raven-haired Furman. She's also particularly vicious, favoring knives in combat, which required Furman to pick up the skill herself. I'm not going to be modest right now. I'm very good at knife throwing, and I'm very proud of that. It was difficult, to say the least, because I did training for about only two weeks before we started shooting, so I had to pick it up pretty quickly. The film's shaky cam action direction, unfortunately, doesn't do Clove or Furman's knife-throwing justice. Furman uses the same sinister smile for Clove that she did for Esther. But while Esther had to conceal her true self, Clove always gets to be who she is, and it's terrifying. The Hunger Games was the highlight of Isabel Furman's 2012, but it wasn't her only project that year. Before it, Furman had done the occasional voice acting role, such as in the children's films A Turtle's Tale, Sammy's Adventures in 2010, or the English dub of From Up on Poppy Hill in 2011. In 2012, she gave video games a try with Hitman Absolution. You know who I am. I know. She's dead, isn't she? Unfortunately, most of Furman's films during the 2010s weren't widely seen or received well. She had an uncredited, blink-and-you'll-miss-it role in After Earth, and a supporting one in the direct-to-video Stephen King adaptation, Cell. Her most notable role was on television, a recurring part in Masters of Sex, as Tessa Johnson, daughter of the lead Virginia, played by Lizzie Kaplan. Speaking to Interview Magazine, Furman called working with Kaplan cool, as she had seen Mean Girls growing up. They also bonded over their love of reality TV, The Bachelorette in particular. While Furman wasn't getting big parts at this time, she embraced the diversity of the roles she did manage to nab. She starred in more horror movies, The Last Thing Mary Saw, and Down a Dark Hall, along with comedies like Dear Eleanor and Good Girls Get High. Off camera, Furman attended a pre-collegiate program at Stanford University, and she expressed interest in studying at Brown University and majoring in psychology. She didn't take that path after all, instead going to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in London. College would eventually play an important role in her acting career, too. In 2021, Isabel Furman finally got a star vehicle with The Novice, an actor-anchored character study written and directed by first-time feature filmmaker Lauren Hathaway. Furman plays Alex, a college freshman who is always pushing herself. Even if she gets no enjoyment from something, she has to be the best at it. Finish first. Why'd you take it twice? One of Furman's greatest acting assets is her intense glare, the perfect body language for a single-minded overachiever like Alex. Looking for an extracurricular activity, Alex discovers her university's rowing team. Rowing is a physically intensive sport, but one that mandates teamwork. It's all about moving in sync with the other rowers. However, the individualistic Alex only sees her teammates as competition to get the highest score and winds up alienating them all. Tellingly, once she does get the highest score, she quits. The Novice is akin to films like Raging Bull or Whiplash, other movies about a person driven to be the best in their field and who takes ambition to self-destructive levels. The physicality of their profession, whether boxing, drumming, or rowing, underscores the lead's drive with a cinematic punch. Speaking to Slash Film about the novice, Furman called her part, quote, a role that any actress would die to play. She continued, to really dive into something, not just mentally, but physically, and to really transform yourself and to be able to be on set every single day and be not only, I guess, the lead of the movie, but to be a creative collaborator with Lauren, who is probably my favorite director I've ever worked with. Furman adds that when she read the script for The Novice, she connected with Alex, saying that she felt very seen by this person who was very driven and ambitious. To secure the part, Furman went above and beyond, penning a letter to Hathaway and taping an extra scene in her audition. With Clove and Esther, Furman relished the chance to craft characters so different from her real self. What drew her to Alex, though, was empathy and kinship. 
Eventually, Orphan First Kill was released 13 years after the original. In 2022, to account for Furman being in her 20s, First Kill used a multitude of practical effects to make Furman look younger and shorter, including two body doubles, Kennedy Irwin and Sadie Lee. Furman says that the three of them co-developed Esther's walk and mannerisms. According to First Kill director William Brent Bell, Furman initially thought she had aged out of playing Esther, but he disagreed. Sensing her passion for the role, Bell convinced her to reprise the role and the studio that they could pull off Esther's return. It's lovely to be back. I miss my family very much. No spoilers yet, but when the movie reaches its shocking climax, you're actually rooting for her. Furman, who said her jaw hit the floor when she read the twist in First Kill, told Newsweek, I can't wait to go see the movie in theaters and watch people's reaction to the movie. Why didn't Orphan become the next big slasher franchise? The first film was more of a cult classic than an instant hit. It made decent money, earning $78 million worldwide, but got middling reviews. It has a 58% Rotten rating on Rotten Tomatoes and a 42 mixed score on Metacritic. Secondly, to get into spoilers for the first Orphan movie, Esther's death in the film is definitive. Kate snaps her neck with a forceful kick, and then her body sinks into a frozen lake. Even Michael Myers would have a tough time coming back from that one. If Orphan were to continue, it would have to be a prequel. And that's what happened with Orphan First Kill. Luckily for fans, Furman has indicated a third Orphan film is coming. Fingers crossed that Orphan prequels don't remain the only films she's starring in.